everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer walkthrough or playthrough of the game Vindication by Orange Nebula. This playthrough is going to be for the solo adventure number two, The Awakening. We're going to show you how to set up the game, the basic rules, and we're going to try and go through an entire playthrough of the game. Whether we win or lose, it'll be uh, up to how uh, good our skills are going to be in the game. So let's go ahead and begin. I have Grant here to explain whenever I goof up. He went through the rules more than I did, so there might be a Per chance that I might mess up on the occasion so he's here to correct me let's go ahead and take a look at the board I'll show you what is included in how to set the game up what you will not need what you will need so down below here is the board for vindication as well as all the decks and there's the three companion decks in red yellow and blue the relic purple deck the trait green deck and the monster orange deck mm -hmm. setup for the base game uh, is very similar to the setup for the adventure mode game you're going to be getting one character standee but instead of having one of those uh, cards that tells you where to set up you can pretty much set up anywhere you want There's alongside no the board. There's no advantage for any other position. Yeah it doesn't matter it's all random as far as that goes. You're also going to be getting a character board which will have potential influence and conviction on it. Eight potential eight influence and two conviction as well as um, you're going to be starting with a mount which is going to be at zero. There are some unique cards to the solo mode adventure, uh, four of them being how you're going to be utilizing a special character, uh, the special Tuk Tuk I believe his name is, and he's going to be moving around the board and rampaging the board. Where is he? He's a hexagonal. Here he is, he's right here which we'll be using. So he's going to be associated with you. You're going to be utilizing him as a good guy in the game uh, to hopefully remove nasty stuff and protect you from being hit by the boss. And then you're going to grab Tick Tick the Gleaming, yep. not to be confused with Tuck Tuck. Yeah, Tuck Tuck is the big monster, and then Tick Tick Tick, tick is going to be your little pet or your mm -hmm. little, your little. I guess it's called a buddy. Uh, which you'll be able to utilize whenever you use your special player abilities. The four cards you're going to be in the game is going to be uh, Roaming the Island, which is your first basic ability with your um, with your Tuk Tuk, and then you're going to be getting Lesser Boon, Greater Boons, and then the way to do the final banishing to get rid of this bad guy here, if you can defeat it. The bad guy's name is Ronak the Earth Trembler. And yeah, these cards are around. related to the abilities on that board over there. Yep. Uh, over here is also the single player variant board in which you're going to be placing one of these tokens here which are called the Annihilation, track. Annihilation Tokens and yep. the Annihilation Track. If at any point these tokens get to the blue flames, that will be the end for us. We are trying to remove six of these blue flames from this board, place them down here on this board, and then also get these little coins here, uh, these victory point tokens. If we can get both of those, we're going to win, but there's yep. three ways for us to lose. The first First way is if six locations on the board are destroyed uh, by this Earth Trembler. We're going to be using the building sites as the ex yep, for destroyed. Yep. Uh, also, if this track here hits any of these, and the final one is if these little dis all the desecration, all the desecration the tokens hit the board here, which is possible as well. But they can also lead to basically the locations being destroyed. You're going to be starting with the same two basic die from the base game, which are these guys here. Actually, uh, or, it's or, sorry, it's one, it's one from the base game, and then the two, two from, the from the expansion. Yes, this one here is the the only difference between this black die and the other black die is this one doesn't have a blank space; it has an yeah. orange space, which is going to be used for the bad guy. And then this one here is basically to determine which way the character, the, the bad guy, a moves. Tie for movement. Yes, which so, is an interesting concept. So now that we've got that all set up, everything else is the same. We get one stat in each inspiration, strength, and knowledge. We're also going to get, depending on the difficulty of the game, we're playing the moderate version of this one. We're getting to put two of each of these on the board as well. Start your point tracker at 20. Yep. Um, during the setup, you'll put the honor markers at 20, uh, what's that, 25, 30? 25, 45, and 60. There you go. Um, or, sorry, 30, 45, and 60. Okay. And uh, then we're also going to go ahead and take our scumbag, which is going to include all the basic uh, tiles for the game. In addition to that, we'll have the miniature for the uh, the landscaper dude, the bad yeah. guy, you as well as the academy in the middle. You can also use the tile if you want. There's no difference. Yeah, if you don't have the miniature or don't want to use the miniature, you can use the tile as, as, instead. Um, but okay, I think that's pretty much it. They will tell you in the game to get rid of certain cards from the decks. Any expanded cards, any expansion cards... 
uh, you're going to remove those from the decks, including the black cards that give you negative points but hurt your opponents. And then, of course, the bag is just going to contain all the land train pieces from the base Yeah, most set. of the cards that are removed, they have to do with endgame scoring, so it makes sense that they're not in there. Because there, there's no endgame scoring for this. It's you win or you lose. Yep. So once one of the conditions triggers, that will be the end of the game. And the way it takes place is pretty simple. You'll take your turn just as you normally would in Vindication, the base game, and then the bad guy will take the, their turn, and it will move based on these die results here. Uh, the only difference in this game, other than the setup, which I've explained, is you cannot control territories. You don't get any points for controlling those territories any conviction other way you would. Conviction is mostly used to light the fires required for the scenario. Yeah, so conviction will be used instead of to control territories. You'll be using them to light fires, which are these guys here, and place them down on the tiles, which we'll explain as we play the game. We're just going to go through it. You can still use the other it. conviction abilities, though. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just probably not in your best interest. Depends yeah, but you game, can use the but... empowered draw. You just can't use the control map okay. regions. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin the second adventure for the game Vindication, The Awakening. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start my character. We'll be over here on eight, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and go through the turn. So we have activate, move, and visit slash rest. To activate, I simply can uh, activate uh, one of my characters, whether it be my wretched character himself, or whether it be any companion I might own. So that might be something I should do later. Speaking of companions, my own, the top cards of all of these decks get revealed as well. Just like Play in the base game. Coming up. Uh, and then the other action you could perform is movement. And movement is based on your mount, which yep. starts at two. So that's what I'm going to do first. So I'm going to go ahead and move my character two spaces. After you've, moved, after you've done your movement, you're going to go ahead, if there's any blank tile spaces that you've walked adjacent to, you're going to go ahead and place them down on the board. And they're going to be the random ones from the base game. So once you've gone ahead and done that, oh no, these aren't what I was looking for. Oh, there's an in. Okay, that's good. Then you're done with that. Movement has been completed. I still can activate my characters and I can still visit a location. Uh, the other thing I can do is rest, which simply lets me move uh, one influence to conviction or a potential to influence. Now go ahead and quickly explain what visiting a location does. Visiting a location means that I can go ahead and visit any location that is adjacent to me. And by visiting them, they're going, to be, they're going to provide me with some kind of benefit, whether I'm spending something to gain something or whether I'm just simply gaining something. And how you gain in this game is you transfer your influence over to these spaces here. Knowledge, inspiration, and strength of the it's base kind of ones. like a worker placement this feel. Uh, yeah, it is. It's, it's kind of. Um, and additionally, there's these three other spaces, wisdom, vision, and courage. Those are the harder to get spaces, but they'll provide you things that are longer lasting, specifically in the mm -hmm. solo mode game, like traits relics and fighting monsters yep. so my first thing i think i'm going to do is i actually want to get i want to get another companion so i'm going to go ahead and spend my influence um by using my character ability the wretched and i'm going to go ahead and place this down on let's go ahead and place this on this one here actually i don't think i will get a companion i don't think i want to do that hmm do i do i but do i want to Okay, and then I'll go ahead and visit. I'm going to go ahead and visit this Holy Spire, which just says uh -huh. I place two inspiration, uh, influence onto inspiration. Yeah, and this is like the tracker it. for, for uh, your, your stats. Yes. Uh, additionally, in this game, there's a special ability I can use, which is the way you're going to be winning the game, or at least one portion to uh -huh. it, which is taking one off of conviction, putting it into influence, and I can take one of these flames off of the track and place it in any adjacent space, but only if there's nothing on them. So All three of them have to have nothing on them. No no destroyed space, no be, monster. Can't destroyed, can't uh, have uh, the defilement, and can't have the bad guy. Yeah, so in this case, it's not a problem, and it also <sighs> secures us a little bit more space to uh, they also can't have a fire on the three, so you couldn't put another fire on yeah, those. Yeah, they have to be three empty spot. spaces. So we're, we're good here. I think I, play, I just placed one of those there. It'll give yeah. us more influence for later. Uh, I used my move action, I've used my visit action, and I used my character, the Wretched. So that ends my turn. Now, I could do other things. For instance, I could recover influence. I can always take influence from anywhere on the board and put it back onto my influence yep. area. There's only one spot you can't take influence from, and that's from the potential. Yes, yeah, so you have to move that. In addition, if I ever remove influence off of my companions and put them um, you take it all back, pool. and the companions removed from the game. Yep. So uh, then I can also choose to vindicate myself if I have 25 points, and I've also managed to move all my potential into influence. I could flip my character over. He gets some victory points, and in addition, I get a stronger ability. 
And then I can also gain proficiencies, which are these guys here, which are going to be yep. bonus actions, which are these boons here I'll explain later. And I can also control, oh, not, well, can't control a region, but I can convert these attributes. So I can spend one in each of the adjacent areas to then gain one in a specific area there. Okay, so we're done that with that. So it's we're going to do, do the boss. So let's see what Ronak's going to do. Now we're going to take these two die here and we're going to simply roll them. There we go. And then we're going to look at the abilities. So this black one is a, going to be a charge. Which is the most likely result. Yep. This is this skull is going to be a screech. And this orange one is going to be take an extra turn. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and explain all of them. Rampage, which is just take an extra turn. Yep. Charge, oh, the boss moves two spaces. And then Shriek, you're going to put one influence from your influence onto uh, all of your companions. And if you can't do that for a particular companion, they're removed from the game. It's really, really nasty. Uh, so, okay, so we're going to first move, though. It says to move to green. We need to figure out which way we're going to move, because there's two specific spaces he can go. Yep, so, so we're going to take, take this die, right? and we're going to roll it. And then it says, it based on the red location. Now, in this case, because it's the exact opposite, he's actually going to do a pull action, right? Yep, so he's going to pull your character one space towards him instead of moving. Yep. Had it been this one over here, it would have been a lot worse, which we'll explain when it happens. And if it doesn't, we'll explain at some point throughout the game. Uh, and then that's his action. His turn is done now. Yeah, if you had gotten any other result but red or green, he would have moved towards the specific spot. Yeah, if he would have gotten, if I would have gotten orange or yellow, he would have went here. If I would have gotten purple or blue, he would have went here. Yeah. Okay, so now Those it's are the most my turn. And I want to continue. Oh, he also moved me and put me into an adjacent space without a tile. So that's going to go there. And then I get to move my two. I think I'm going to move one here. Now you can pause your movement and put out the new tiles before continuing to move, right? Uh, I don't think you can. I think you have to move fully. Okay. But I think I'm going to move this way. We'll see what two new tiles I get. I kind of like that in, but I also want to avoid getting too many companions. Okay. Okay. Not so bad. Um, hmm. What do I want to do now? So I've moved. I can activate my character again, which can let me put one onto blue. Uh -huh. And whenever I activate my character, I can use the Tick Tick's abilities, but because there's no reason to use them yet, I won't discuss him too much. He's going to be able to absorb nasty stuff on the board, and then he can use it to augment uh, my potential to influence or influence the conviction. Uh, I will use the basic action for conviction. I'll spend that conviction, which will allow me to take another one of these fires. And I go ahead and place it in adjacent space again. And I get to take an uh, action on one of those areas if I want. Hmm. What do you think, Grant? Uh, you could empower some of your your potential or influence. With, my, with the monastery, huh? Yeah. If I take these two, I will. What, so what's that one there? Just plus two red? Yeah, plus two red. And this one is spend three red, and I can up the value of my uh, of my mount. I'll spend these two blue, so it goes back to my influence, and it lets me augment two potential. So I'll move those two over there. And those are my three actions. I don't want to do anything else, so I'm going to end. Let's go ahead and see what the boss does. All right. Oh, no, he's going to move towards orange, which is this way, so I can go in either of these two directions. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. He's going to go towards purple which will be this side, so he's going to go this way. Now remember, he and always then, discovers tiles as he well. He does, and he also is going to place this black yep, tile on there. he leaves the space. And so he's, he's always going to discover the tile he moves onto? Yep. Only the only the tile he moves onto. He's never going to be on an empty, empty board space. If he ever moves back onto the space, too, with this being on there, yep. then it's going to destroy that space. That's how the spaces get destroyed in this game. Now he's going to roll again, because that was a free action for him. And that is going to be, he's going to shriek and he's going to move towards orange. So he's going to move towards orange on the blue, which is the exact opposite. Which means well, he actually, pulls me, right? Doesn't, uh, doesn't he have an equal shot towards orange, right? He can go this way or this way, right? That's true. Oh yeah, so he's going to pull you towards him. So he's going to pull me towards him because we, 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 we rolled the tiebreaker, which was the back end. Mm -hmm. Which means I'm going to go this way. And additionally, he's going to shriek, which means that <laughs> he's going to... I think Shrieking does something worse when you're adjacent to him. Well, he normally is going to make me put one influence on each of my companions, but, but I don't, don't have, any, have any of those. Right? No, I don't. What other things could it do? So basically you're saying when this character is here, he can do something even worse? Let's see. Drain, uh, shriek. 
missed that one influence all your companions or you should, no it was just just normal okay it's it's the the really big ones that the bad things happen so we're good then we just i didn't actually have to even put anything on my companions i don't have any right now yep okay all right so it's my turn again i'm kind of feeling like i want to not mess with that too much so i'm gonna well what you could do is you could uh activate your character and get the strength right and then uh, activate the space and get upgrade your movement. That's and then true. Move to the spot and remove the defilement. So I basically I'm gonna activate uh, the wretched me personally. Mm -hmm. Place that there. That's gonna be my character activation. In addition, I can then spend these three for a upgrade to my mount, which will flip this guy over. Now I can move three spaces a turn. And in addition to that, I get three victory points. One, two, and three. And uh, then I can go ahead and move one, two, and three, I suppose. Yep. And now while you're activated, Tick Tick is also activated. Yep. So I can uh, choose to, whenever I activate my character, I can use uh, him to activate one of his abilities. And I'll use his absorb ability, which will let me absorb this, an adjacent one of these black cubes and place mm -hmm. it on him. My, his other abilities, he can convert them by removing them and moving one of my potential to uh, influence. Or just simply augmenting. I can now, augment while the, the defile is on Tick Tick, it still counts as being in play and not in the supply. Yep. So we gotta be careful with that. Okay, and so I have moved, I used my character, and I have uh, used a visited a space. So I think that's all I can do for now. Okay. Let's see what the boss does. Uh, purple. And which way is he going to go? It's going to go towards orange. Well, it doesn't just move towards purple. Oh, that's true. So whenever the boss is uh, guaranteed to go a specific way, he's always going to... If, if there's the closest distance, he'll always go that. So in this case, it's always going to be that way. Because this would go to red, and this would go to green. So this is the only one that moves to purple. So when he moves there, we'll take one of these black ones, place this here. He gets to make an extra action, so he'll get to go again. And he's going to go towards orange. Which just basically puts him back on this space here. This black cube gets put back, and he destroys this space. So we, we lose an in. And then he shrieks. But unfortunately for him, that doesn't hurt us in any way. Not yet. But we did lose one out of the six spaces that would make us lose the game. That's unfortunate. There was nothing we could have done about that. He kind of moved back and forth. And also, one, one goes on here, too. On the command post, because he moved up that space. Yeah. All right, so now it's our turn once again, and I'm kind of feeling, well, one, two, maybe even three. Yeah, gives you three new tiles. Maybe I get something interesting here. One, two, and three, that was my movement. Two blue, you say. And then we have another command post for my movement to increase. And then we have this one here, which removes influence off of our allies. So I'm going to take these and put them on blue. And then I will place one on strength, utilizing... That's activating your character. Yes, activating my character. And those are the three things I need to do. Yep. So back to, back to him and his dastardly deeds. Okay, so he's going to move towards green. And there is only one way to move towards green, which is over There's here. There's two, right? Because he goes this way. Well, let's see. Is uh, this so? Does this count as one? These are the two spots he can move to. These two here. Yeah, because that's towards green. Okay, so there will be a bonus, and it'll go orange, which means it'll go this way. And he doesn't put a defilement on here because nope. it's already been destroyed. And he does screech, but that doesn't hurt us. Just but yet. he does put a tile under himself. It's true. He's discovering things for us. Being very helpful. Very nice of him. Very helpful indeed. All right. My turn once again. Hmm. I don't like any of these right now. I'm going to go ahead and move over here. That's my move. I'll go ahead and discover something else. That's a monastery. I'll activate my character. And then I will convert two and two to put two on purple. And that works just simply like this. I would take one red and one blue, converting it to purple, and I would do it again. And uh, I can then look at this location. I can uh, use this location. Spend two purple to take this one here or the top one. What's this one say? Return one influence from this relic to your potential and gain three victory points. 
So you wow. downgrade it in points to gain uh, victory points? Yeah, I want that. So I'll take that. You can put one to three influence on it when you acquire it. Oof. I'm going to put all three. Risky? Maybe a little bit. And when I get it, I get six points. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One away. One away from getting my, my ability to summon our boss. Well, you're going to need some conviction to light another fire anyway. So you'll want to be looking for ways to do that. Yeah. Um, this gets re revealed. One influence teleport to any unoccupied space. Not too bad. Now, I guess it's his turn. I don't think I have anything else I really want to do. And I've activated all three. And when can I use this? Return one influence from this relic to your potential and gain three points. When you normally use artifacts, right? Yeah, I suppose I could. Maybe just once a turn, but I think I will do this at least once, which will push me three. One, two, and three, which will give me this. And it goes on that And it'll right go there. over here. And that basically allows me to summon this character here. I can summon it in any of the three spots. More accurately, it allows you to use actions. Uh, you don't have summon him yet because you still need to summon another fire. Oh, that's true. I need one more fire because I, before I can bring him out. This is the summon fire, and then then, then I can use the boots. The honor markers are actions for uh, Tuk Tuk to yes. use, basically. Yeah, and, th and there's a cost to his actions, which are located over here and on the card over there. Mm. Okay, that's it for me. Let's go ahead and see what the bad guy's going to do. All right, so he's going to charge towards red. And in this case, it's just this way, right? It's two spots, right? Because you got from there towards red. Can I go here? I believe that's correct. Hmm. Orange. So he'll move this way. Yeah. And because he stops, he gets to screech. Yep. And the screeching doesn't do anything, once again, luckily. But we haven't bought any companions, so that's... You're going to have to put a, a tile under him, and then yep. roll one more time for his movement, because he still has one more move. Yep. He's, so I'm going to put a tile under him. I also want to put a black token here. And then, because he still has an extra movement, I roll the movement die again. Which goes to orange. So, so he, sh he, sh he would shriek again. Jeez. Wow. What? <laughs> what? Okay. Jeez. And so he'll go this way. That's his only way towards green. Okay. And that destroys this tile as well. That's it's really glad uh, Tuk Tuk wasn't standing next to him. Jeez, that would have been, not been so good. Okay, uh, now it's our turn again. <sighs> what do I want to do? Probably gain some more conviction. And I can do that by this with using the monastery. So I have to use the library. Well, you, what you could do is you could activate yourself for one blue, right? Yeah. Then you could activate the tile for that. And then, because you activated yourself, you could use so, to, to, or, uh, yeah, to visiting, his other I'm, ability. I'm, yeah, first of all, I'm visiting the library, placing this here. I'm also activating myself, putting one there. And then because I activated myself, I can convert, turning this to push this here, or I can push this here. I think I'll push that there. And I can also put this back and place a fire out, which now lets me summon the great Tick Tick. Tick Tick. <laughs> On one of the other three spaces. We'll put you right here, but eh, put you right here. Safer. Okay. That's all I can do. Uh, actually, Thanks. now you have another set of bonus actions because you have one honor marker. Mm -hmm. You can move uh, Tuck Tuck. That's true. So I can spend this, which I will on this turn, which lets me move him one space. And you get the honor markers back at the end of every round. Yeah. So. so you're always going to re re continue to re-up. All right, that's about it now. All right, so we'll roll these guys here. Oh, this is... Extra turn towards green. So we've got two spots. But, so he has these two? Uh, no, it's the these two. These two. He's going towards the green side of the board. All right, let's see where he's going to move. Orange. Should I put him here? Yep. All right, new tile out. Oh, we got a monster den there. And then... He goes again. Oh, no. He walks towards blue. Which there's only one way, right? So he'll move there, placing that there. And he gets to move again charges towards orange which there's two ways now right uh, looks like it 
And that moves towards red, which puts him over here. Oh, that heals one more space. That and destroys that one as well. Oh, no. He is doing a He's rampage. today. Hmm. What do I want to do now? Perhaps clear some defilement? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So I can spend, I first use my own ability, which will give me a blue, and then I'll spend it on the monastery to move four pieces up, three and four. Then I'll move one, two, I wanna go again, three perhaps? And then, because I used, I activated my character. Take the defilement off of that one. Yep. And also spend one of these. Oh, this actually goes here. Which will give me three more points. Seems like a good turn. Uh, you want to light a fire? I can. Let's go ahead and light a fire. We'll put you over here. I'm trying to put him far out so that yep. you can't get to him. Now, because you have four fires lit you have access to greater or to lesser boons but i need to get to here first to get this coin yeah. so that i can utilize them and you also need to acquire the tiles as well yes but that's all i can do for this turn so let's go ahead and take their black and white die back let's see what we get it's gonna be a charge towards orange okay so he screeches and rolls again screeches and rolls again and then he's going to... You actually just roll the direction die. So he's going to go towards blue. Oh, okay. And now you tiebreaker it. Orange? Um, which pulls me towards him. Yeah. So he's already half the way to winning when it comes to just destroying spaces. Which makes me nervous. Uh, you can probably go get the defilement off of the... I have to... Well, I could, huh? You can hold, you can hold three defilement. So I'll use my character ability? No, I was going to say you could get the one off of the... The, the gaping maw. No, 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 the outpost right here uh, that upgraded your mount. Because he could potentially charge in that direction. Whereas he couldn't most likely charge. One, two, him. three. Something like that. That's true. Because he can get to here. And then I can spend my character ability on that. Mm -hmm. Which then lets him suck this up. And my last action is to visit a space. What's Tuk Tuk on? Two yeah. yellow? Do I care about that right now? I'll roll for the academy. The way the academy works is pretty simple. You roll the die, red. If you don't, ha and then you place one on the space that you rolled. And if you don't have that space, you roll again. But I do, so that was my only roll. So you should have rolled before you added the one to the red space. Absolutely. Absolutely. A goof. A goof. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. You moved, you activated, and you activated a space. Oh, be gentle. Be gentle! Move towards green, so we're up tiebreaker. Blue. That one right there, yep. And then he goes again. Oh, oh, oh. Red. Shrieks and move towards red. Uh, so there's two spots you could go, so roll again. Goes towards blue. Okay. Well, At least he's just living in his... He's just living train. in his area. Yeah, he's not messing with us, which is good. What do I want to do now? Well, you could potentially activate the academy again for potentially five influence. Uh... That is living a little dangerously. I kind of want to go over to kill, destroy a monster, too. Well, that could potentially get you uh, an orange or some more red, which will be useful for slaying the monster. The academy? Yeah, the one where you roll. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to spend one influence mm -hmm. using uh, for using my character, which will then place one here. Okay. Uh, then that will also let me take one of these guys off and augment 
And in addition, I will now use this space, the command post, by removing these three, which will upgrade my knot once again to four. Does that mean you gain four more victory points? Yep. And that also puts me, so I can move directly to here if I wanted to. But I used my character, I did my uh, visit, and I moved. Right? No, you no didn't I didn't move. move. Three. I'll move here. I you suppose. can move one more if you want. Oh, that's true. So I actually can move over here. I will move over there. That sounds good. And I think that's it. Oh, I'll spend this last one into my potential to gain three more points. Okay. All right. Let's see what you do, buddy. What you got? What you got? He's going to charge to blue. There's two spaces he can move. And he goes towards orange, which pulls me back towards him. Yep. And he also... Oh, no, he just charges. Okay. That's it? Yeah, the root, the, the root pull uh, negates his movement, and so does the drain the earth. Gotcha. All right. Now, see, your problem with you heading towards the monster's den is you don't have any orange cubes right now, or the ability to make orange cubes. Where there's a will, there's a way. I have over 25. I just need to pull these somehow. I still think right now you should roll the academy. I'm just not rolling. <sighs> Alright, I'll roll the academy. Oh, there's an orange. Right here? Yeah. Alright, one more time. That's it. But that's nice, because now you have the two that you need for... Uh, I can activate a character, and I'll activate myself, put that there. Why blue? Uh, well, I, no, no, blue's fine. Uh, move here. Absorb a defilement as well? Or and are you going to convert a defile, or convert? I'll absorb. Good play. He could potentially charge in that direction. Yep. I think that's it. I think it's gonna Let's see what he does. See what Ronak does. It's gonna shriek towards green, and green can go in either of these two yep. areas. Towards orange. So he'll move here, and he'll shriek, and if he shrieks on me, nothing, right? It's the same yep. thing as just I, I get an influence on all my characters. What about this? Do I, do I get this when he shrieks on me? No, it's when he shrieks next to the the boss. Your boss. Okay. I haven't really been using him too much. Just You've kinda, just been keeping him out of the way because it's kind of weak right moving now. Moving him around right now. Okay. That was my first thing I'm going to do on my move. I can also then convert these two. Yep. To fight five this one. boss. Five points. At the end of the game, you gain five seven honor if there are no blocks in your power board, so it doesn't matter. So I get five points. Guarantee, but I've got to roll this die to see what happens, and that means, oh, I'm not fighting with a companion. Does that mean you move to influence down to potential instead? No, I, I don't think I can. I don't think I can actually fight, period, if I don't have one. I don't think I can fight. I'll look really quickly, though. Luckily, this book is really easy to uh, navigate through. If you don't have any companions, you can't fight monsters. Oh, that breaks my heart. All right, I'll put these back. I lose this one. One, two, three, and four points, right? That's the value it of it. It was five, I think. It was five. I get my cubes back. Cubes that. Yep, so I actually have to go... Put in. Yeah. Well, it's way on the other side of the board. I've got four movement. Four. I also have to slowly tra traipse back. Hmm. I guess I'll roll the die. For the academy. Purple. It's good. And orange. 
That was a high value roll. Yep. And I also get to use my character ability. Where should I put you? Put That's you probably. here. And I'll convert these two to purple. Can I activate the, the relic before you leave? Yes. Yeah. But that's the end of my turn for this. I've activated my character. I have went here, and I moved. All right. Let's see what happens. A purple charge, which means it can be these two. Orange. That's red, right? That's orange. Oh, okay. Which means he goes this way twice. No biggie. No biggie at all. Okay, I'll spend some on my turn. I'll spend these two purple, which is going to give me... Do you want that one, or do you want another one? Return one influence to teleport to any unoccupied space. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, I want that. Five points. And I will put two influence on it. What's that? Dawn Seeker Signet. Return one yeah, influence. Yeah, that was a good try. I got a better one. All right, so I'll, I still can move. And activate the character ability. I'll move here. How do I activate myself? What do you think I should do? One more in yellow? One more, more in blue? Well, it depends which, uh, which companion or unit one are trying to recruit. Actually, he's worth a lot of points. I'll put this one over there. And then, are you gonna remove one defilement to yeah. upgrade? To augment. Which then I can use to put another one of these guys out. Okay. And... Now you have access to greater boons. Which is good. I could spend all three of these for a greater yellow boon, and that one... Oh, sorry. I could spend these three for the courage one which says I can dig for courage and take a second turn immediately after this one it's pretty good second turn immediately I don't think I want to do that just yet though I think that's all my turn I think that's all I can do or all I want to do I'll take these two all right he's gonna move towards orange there's only one space you can go so he hits there shrieks and I don't have a companion just yet but I will soon he also places a defilement marker. Okay. And then you roll one more time for his move. Because he moved to green. Okay, tiebreaker. Towards red, which is he pulls me. Well, that's irritating. Well, I have to go... I have to go here. So I have to spend my movement to move one space. Ah, and then I can I can then use this on my basic ability to put one on the the red here. Yeah. I uh, move this off of him and push this. I will visit the inn, spending two strength, which will then give me this guy here because he's pretty dang good. And he says, uh, he gives me four points. One, two, three, and four. And when Yono joins your party, you get one courage. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's really good, actually. Okay, and... Uh, you moved, activated the tile, and, act and activated it yourself. Yeah, I can't spend this because I already have a fire here. So I'm done. He's going to move towards orange and shriek. So he just shrieks then. Which makes me put an influence on my character. Yeah. And then he's going to move again towards red. And he shrieks. Looks like he's uh... purple. Which means he goes here. Oh, blows up another tile. Blows up another tile. And he moved off the green. Putting another defilement on there. Time is running out. Yes, it is. It's too many ways to lose. Not enough ways to win right now. Tuck Tuck's also very close to him. <sighs> or yeah, Tuck Tuck. Which is kind of, kind of good. All right, my turn. I will spend these two to move Tuck Tuck over here. We're moving this. Yep. 
Tartek will remove the fire or defilement of any space he stands on. Move that four spaces that way. I'm one space off. So I can roll the die, I suppose. Or I can rest. Actually, I will move three spaces instead of four. Then I will rest, pushing over conviction. And I'll take one of these put it in influence, and then place my final fire I need over here. Now you just need some more victory, or some more uh, honor markers. And then I'll go ahead and place this here. Okay, that's all I can do. Ooh, he's going to charge towards blue. There's only one spot. This way? Yeah. And he's going to place one of these guys here. All right, my turn. Yeah, I think he finally realized that I'll the other side two. of uh, his country is on fire. I'll move my tuk tuk over here. I really don't want him to mess with this stuff. I'll move over here. I'll spend two of these, uh, and I would use them to use a black cube to show who my my guy is. To fight a monster, I'll fight this guy. Those were seven. Yeah. So I get my seven points. And I have to roll the die. I have to put an influence. All right. Wasn't it two influence for that? He's fatigued. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, you can look it up. It's in the monsters here. Right down there. And I also get to roll this. Two influence. And I get to roll the white die, which gives me one on orange. All right. And then I can spend one for my character. Moved, space, character. That's yeah. it. Let's see what he does now that he's on the scary side of the board. The side I don't want him on. Charge towards red. He stops there. Yep. And what tuck, does he do? Uh, causes a wound to Tuck Tuck. So you put an Annihilation Tracker on. Yep. And does he roll again? It. No? Okay, so he just charges into him, basically. He goes, ugh, and hits him. Which is kind of what I was hoping to happen, so he wouldn't go this way again. I'm going to leave Tuck Tuck there for now, I think. Well, kind of am going to put him over here, I think. Which will cost me one token. Uh, I am now going to, and this is revealed, this monster. Forgot about that. That's worth five at the end of the game. I don't care about that. I will spend again two. And I'll target my character again here. And see what I get. Five more points. For another monster. One, two, three, four, and five. Which is all three of them that I need. Uh, in addition, I gotta roll a black die to see if my character makes it. You don't, it's a blank. Uh, yeah, it's a blank. It's blank, so nothing. And then... Blue. Not too shabby. Okay, so now to, in order to win the game, I need to have over 60 and all three of these tokens right mm -hmm. and then i can have access to this final blessing card and it says drive ronak from the realm you may initiate the game ending if at least uh, six sp spirit fires are on the map all three honor tokens are available and tuk tuk is adjacent to him so now you're gonna want to try and move closer to it's his turn now right uh you well you can still move uh tuk tuk because he needs to end up being adjacent to him so put him there. Something like that. Now, now it would be Ronak's turn. Red. Charge. One and two. And then these two. Yep. Okay. And now it's my turn again? Yep. So I can spend these two to move him one and two. Yep. Get rid of these. Get rid of those. And now that I'm adjacent to him, oh, I have to spend all three. You have to spend all three. So I has to be adjacent to him. You still have one more spot to to uh, to move if you want. The best move is probably move back one, right? Because he's either going to get caught on the side and shriek, 
or he's gonna move out, or he's gonna move to the side. But where should he, I move? Probably to the academy in the center. That way, if he only if uh, he doesn't get caught in a shriek loop, we'll be okay. I still have my character to activate too, but I don't really need to do all that much. I will spend one for my character, putting it on blue. I'll move this character. Uh, we can make one, another two, fire three, in case Ronak gets. Uh, I don't have any places to make a fire, except for I guess right here. And I will spend these four to push these four. Okay. I just need to put, remove one more potential influence. Activated, moved, and okay. Let's see what he does. Let's see if I get lucky here. I just need you not to move. Or not to move. It. Move into these areas. Orange. And he's going to sprint. Tiebreaker. No, there's only one way towards orange. Oh, he has to go here then. And then uh, he'll shriek, so one influence on your companion. Yep. And then he's going to roll again. Blue. So he can go these ways? Uh, yep. Purple. So he'll go here. Wow. He ended up going back in the same space. I'm gonna rest. I'm gonna rest. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna rest to move potential to influence, which then will turn me in onto the vindicated side because I have now pushed all my potential away, and I'm also past the 25 point marker, which gives me five more points. One, two, three, four. Build a fire. Yeah. My last fire. I can't build it on him though, huh? No, he would put it out. Okay. Um, you could acquire a boon token. Yes, there's multiple boons I can get. Right now I can get the yellow one, though, which Have is... Ignite one spirit fire on any open space in the map. What? Have you uh, activated yourself this turn? Yes. Hmm. I still gotta deal with this guy. If I just be done with him. No, I'm just gonna let him go. We'll see what happens. Roll the dice. Towards green. And he shrieks. That means it's these two possibles. Yep. Does he literally pull me in one? Yep. And he shrieks, putting one on there. Oh, yeah, I already put those shriek on. How do I deal with him? No, I mean, I guess you could just move closer to him and hope for the best now. That's where I'm going to go. Which are costing a one here. Mm, you could activate. I think you get the orange one now. Actually, you could get the orange one now, right? Take an extra turn. When you activate yourself, right? You get two of the red. So I can I, I can activate myself, which puts two on red. That's true. I can spend this and this, this and this for two on courage. I can spend three of the courage to get this boon. Then you would spend those two tokens to activate the greater. Spend these two to activate this, which gets removed. And this says that I can take a second turn after this one, which gives me these three back. Yep. And puts me adjacent to him, allowing me to finally spend the three coins I need. So there is actually a way to where you can control yourself getting to that guy. And so that means we win the game. Yep. Yes! Destruction! Complete and utter destruction! And he's going to move to the monastery and live out the rest of his life as a monk. You've vindicated the island. I've vindicated, yes. I, I, uh, the, the reckoning? No. What's it called? The awakening? The awakening. He was awoken as a, as a monk. He was kind of like Solomon Kane, where he lived, lived out his life in the monastery. We got farther off along. The first time we played this game, we got annihilated. So, I enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun. I love vindication, and 
this is a nice rendition of a solo mode for Vindication. And tough, too. Uh, luckily, with for us, we didn't have to deal with this as much because we didn't put Tuck Tuck in a lot of uh, harm's way. And this time I didn't go for as many companions. I focused on getting the artifacts and dealing with monsters yeah, to push and me through points. one of the last points. games in the, the scenario I was trying to prevent was him getting caught next to a wall because he ended up shrieking a bunch of times in a row. And he hit my tuk tuk. Like he hit my tukus. My tukus was hit many times. And so this thing started getting loaded. And you gotta be very careful because if this thing gets loaded, you're very likely to lose. Additionally, what didn't happen to in this game is if this character was here, for instance, right? And I rolled a green... And then on tiebreaker, you rolled a green. Yeah, well, if it was, if it looked like this. So explain what this does. So what? So that normally, does, instead of moving, you choose one of these two, right? But yep. in this case, the tiebreaker was green as well. So instead of him moving, he he's going to destroy the land tile he's on if it's not already destroyed. Uh, he's going to cause a wound to Tuck Tuck, and then he's going to, if you're adjacent, uh, uh, he's going to kill a companion. And he only causes the wound if he's adjacent to Tuck Tuck. Yeah, so he would kill this character if I was adjacent. So it's a, it's a very powerful... Poor guy? Uh, if he died. Uh, additionally, too, if you roll this, this is the worst combination you probably could get. Yeah, then you get to take another turn right after. So then he get, to do, he get to do that to you, and then he takes another turn right. And so every time getting rolling this orange is going to be a bad time for us. But anyway, Vindication Solo Mode, if you want to play Vindication Solo, this is one of two different variants. There's a bunch of different expansions and whatnot. I want to show you guys this because I uh, don't think I see a lot of the Vindication Solo Mode uh, walkthroughs or playthroughs going on, and I think it deserves a nice full playthrough video. So hopefully you uh, learned something, and maybe you guys want to pick up this game, or if you already have Vindication, go ahead and give it a try. There should be the second edition coming out very shortly. This is the box for the game, and this is the Leaders and Alliance pack which I believe also it comes with the solo mode. Very, very nice. Uh, maybe we'll be doing the first rendition of the solo mode campaign in a walkthrough, or we'll play the Leaders and Alliance campaign. We'll see, had some fun. Thank you guys so much for watching Vindication. I look forward to... See you guys next time. That's right. <laughs>